Thank you. Well, how do I follow that? Um, I think to list Pete's climbing achievements would, I think, be out of place here. Anyway, it would take too long. I mean, basically, just open any guidebook. I mean, from the lakes to Cornwall, the Verdon to Yosemite. Pete was there. His roots remain a testimony to the man. I mean, it didn't seem to matter whether he was at 10 foot or 100 foot above rubbish gear, often with poor rock. His ability to remain cool was truly awesome. And you must remember, the gear we had in those days was quite archaic, to say the least. We no micronuts, no sophisticated camming units, EBs padded out with a, a nice thick pair of socks. I mean, there were several other things in Pete's climbing that really, really impressed me at that time. Obviously the training, the travel. I mean, it didn't matter where in the world it was, if there was climbing to be done, Pete would ferret it out. And these trips always involved, um, shall we say, adventure. Usually just to book the system, but more of that later. There was also the ability to make everything he did newsworthy. I mean, he was the best PR man I ever met. I mean, he could have made Skodas sound glamorous. I mean, sure, he had his knockers, but doesn't everybody at the top? I mean, more often than not, these doubters were put in their place, me included, by superb writing. I mean, usually in our game, there are those that write about it, those that do it. The two are not the same. But I think Pete was an exception. The humour and the wit was always there. He would always display this sense of nonchalance, spontaneity as well. But behind the scenes, everything was meticulously worked out. Beat on the crag, with a wee midweek inspection that he'd never let on about. Or in play. I remember at the bridge, Sentinel Bridge in Yosemite, the deep river there, a pool probably as wide as this room, <clears throat> cold, very cold water. But Pete knew from his diving days how long he could hold his breath. His party piece at the pool was basically pick up a big granite boulder at one side, walk into the river, 45 seconds later, walk out the other side. <laughs> Many, many stories about Yosemite. Astro Man. For it was a big route of the time, only being done by uh, the locals, the Americans. Pete and I wanted to do the second descent. I noticed he'd been you know, looking at the topo first thing before we set out. And there's one particular pitch that we, that we were really scared about halfway up this route, a thing called the Harding Slot. About a third of the way up, I, I actually sussed that Pete had worked out that I would get to lead the Harding slot. So I thought, sod this. And we'd got some very, very long ropes with us. So I, I led two pitches in one, which meant that he got the Harding slot. He had the, le the last laugh the next day, a climb called Space Babble. Very bold, 10, 12 pitch route on Middle Cathedral. Second ascent, as I say, got to the bottom with a big entourage of Americans wanting to watch us do this route. He was unpacking his rucksack. Sorry, Ron, I seem to have forgotten my harness. You'll have to lead it all. Thank you. <laughs> 